is Jean back with another video. If this is your first time ever seeing my face, please hit that subscribe button down below to join the G Gang. If not, then hey girl, hey, and let's get straight into the video. If this is your first time ever seeing my face, then let me just explain something to you guys very quickly. I'm G, as I just introduced myself a while ago. Um, I do a series of things on my channel. Um, today, you've clicked on a Monday video, which means that today, on the day that this was filmed and most likely uploaded, it is Murder Mystery Monday or True Crime and Makeup. It's whatever I really feel as to name it. But during these segments, we really just talk about an interesting crime that I think is interesting while I just do my makeup. And I know my hair looks a mess. You don't have to tell me. But at the end of the video, my hair will be put together. <laughs> so... Let's just ignore that and let's get straight into the true crime. Today, we are going to be talking about the crime um, by Lucas, Henry Lee Lucas. I think I want to call him Lucas because I, I like that name. Not that there's anything wrong with a Henry as well. But let's just get straight into the video. Lucas was born in August 23rd, 1936 in Blacksburg, Virginia to his parents and his parents' name were also Lucas. I guess you could say Lucas Jr. and Viola Viola. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I feel like that's a really old name that you don't really hear about here too much too often nowadays today so don't come for me in the comments because i don't know how to say his mother's name it was one of nine siblings so it was a very large family which i think was pretty common for around that time in the 1930s i think it was very common to have a large number of siblings rather as to now it's more common to find two or three kids in a household so i'm not judging his parents were unfortunately alcoholics and were not the best parents at all well actually they were the scum of the earth i'm not even gonna lie to you guys like they were horrible parents to him especially his mother his mother was a prostitute actually and as he was growing up especially when he was younger his mother a lot of the times made him either ooh, what the heck just happened his mother made him basically watch her give sex is that how you say it like i don't know she was a prostitute so she sold her body he his mother basically allowed him to watch whenever she would have clients come over watch her do her job if that's the right way to say it oh disclaimer because i always forget disclaimer 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 right here please if you are going to watch this is very graphic very like very very graphic so please be of age please know what you're getting into so i'm just letting you know so he would often watch his mother do her job which is i think as a young child they shouldn't even know what that is and the fact that the mother did allow him to do that like of course He's going to grow up to have some issues. So I don't know, like, I don't know what she was thinking or if she was drunk when she made him watch. But the little, the poor little boy, like, I'm, I'm sorry for him as a child, honestly. His also, his mother also made him cross dress in order to sell him to clients of any gender. Because if you cross dress them, then they could go for either one, I guess. But I don't know. So I guess it's not illegal. Like, why? Why is the mother? Why was the mother never in jail? And did she do this to her other kids? Was was my question because if you're doing it to one, I'm sure you're doing it to all. Like, I'm pretty sure money and drugs and alcohol doesn't just favor one child. Like, you're gonna do it to all your kids. That's what I believe. But eventually, his school teachers complained about his cross dressing, and then a court order made her stop cross-dressing him i just think back and i'm just like dang not only did she do that to him she did it to him to go to school so i'm sure he was a little bit picked on or teased on or bullied maybe even at school in this in december 1949 lucas's father passes away his father actually passes away of hyperthermia Hi, how do you say that word hypothermia after coming home drunk and collapsing in a blizzard i guess he never got home i guess after 
being on his way home and collapsing in the blizzard. He dies of hyperthermia. That's crazy to me. Like, that mind boggled, honestly. As a teen, Lucas's sexualness, I don't even know what to call it, but like his, you know how kids get older, not older, but you know how kids like grow up as a teenager and they figure out their sexuality and they experiment and whatnot. Lucas figured it out, especially because he was exposed to it super early. So he had a lot of that in him more than any other teenage, or I would say thereof. He was reported to have had sex with his half brother and a few dead animals which I can't even really honestly fathom because like, wow, that's a huge jump, huge. On June 10th, 1954, Lucas was charged with over a dozen, over a dozen burglaries, guys. Like this man was getting busy, like busy. And the reason why he was getting, getting so busy was because that he was, he had dropped out of school. So he dropped out of school pretty early in life. I I think I read the sixth grade or I could be wrong. He was sentenced to four years in prison in Virginia for the crimes that he had committed. He ended up escaping in 1957 and was captured three days after his escape. He was then released in September 2nd, 1959. And then in the late 1959, Lucas traveled to Michigan in order to be with his sister, Opal. At this time, Lucas was actually engaged to a pen pal who he was writing while being incarcerated. His mother ended up visiting for christmas in in christmas 1959 after he told his mother of this of his engagement his mother had strongly disapproved of this engagement she was really upset and it resulted in a huge argument the argument basically consisted about how she didn't like his fiance and how he, she should move back with his with her like move back in with me and knowing all the stuff he did to her, like she did to him Honestly, I don't blame him for not wanting to go back. Like he rather stay with his sister. Let let the man's a grown man. Like let him be. So while she was there during Christmas, they argued several times over the same thing being his engagement. In January 11th, 1960, in Tecumseh, Michigan, Lucas kills his mother during an argument about his nuptials. And not only was the argument about his nuptials, it was about whether or not he should come home with his mother in order to take care of her in her old age. He claimed that he struck her over the head with a broom and then stabbed her in the neck. Like, I'm just, I don't, y'all will understand. Cause I just, I, you all understand why I'm confused in a second. So after stabbing his mother in the neck, of course, he flees the scene as every killer, every right-minded killer would do. They flee the scene in order to not be caught. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm doing something on my list. I don't, nothing too crazy. He said, all I remember is slapping her on the neck but after i did that i saw her fall and i grabbed her but she fell to the floor and i went up to pick her up then i noticed that i had my knife in my hand and that she had been cut unquote because what the fuck <laughs> what the hell anyway this is what he told police i don't know why he thought that was gonna get him somewhere but he did but anyway he fled the scene Okay, that's all we need to know. He fled the freaking scene. When Opal returned home, she found her mother on the floor, still barely clinging for her life. Thank God she wasn't dead. But unfortunately, when ambulances did arrive, Viola, Viola did not make it to the end, unfortunately. Officials said that Viola did die of a heart attack because they said that it was also precipitated by the assault by her son. So... It makes sense. It seems very viable. So, and then Lucas was then arrested in Ohio on an outstanding warrant. I'm sorry, I'm trying to, on an outstanding warrant for Michigan. Lucas had claimed to have killed his mother in self-defense, but 
I don't know why he would say that because she was a little old lady. Like, you're, you're a strong man. Like, you what? She was asking you to come home and take care of her and you saying that it was self-defense. Like, boy, bye. Go somewhere else. We're not stupid. We're not stupid. Luckily, that claim was rejected and he was sentenced to 20 to 40 years of imprisonment. Why did he not get life? And you would think that the story ends here, but it doesn't. Like, I'm really mind boggled. What were they thinking? They failed. They failed. They failed. They failed. He was in prison. <laughs> he was in prison. He was in prison for 20 to 30 years. 20 to 40 years. He was sentenced to imprisonment for 20 to 40 years, guys. For second degree murder, after two attempted suicides, he was sent to the Ionia State mental hospital after 10 years in prison in june 1970 due to over crowdedness over crowdedness over population he was released this man killed his mother not anybody that he didn't know somebody he knew somebody who grew up. he killed his mother and he was like oh riddle me that like, I really, I don't understand. Somebody explain to me, because I will never understand it. In 1971, Lucas was found trying to kidnap three school girls. Because why'd you let him out? It was one year after you let him out. Why? Why'd you let him out, though? Why? He served five years for the crime. And while in jail, he was able to make some connections with a few people, which I don't know. I just don't understand, but I digress, let's go. He married her upon his release in 1975, but that marriage didn't last long because two years after he was married, he left because her daughter had accused him of sexual abuse. Sounds a little strange, but not far off. So I'm gonna take this off. I don't know. I hope you guys can hear me. If you guys can't hear me, I'm super sorry. I needed to mix this foundation. I don't know why I didn't. After his separation with his wife, he began moving between different relatives um, until one of his relatives was able to get him somewhat of a stable job. So he moved to West Virginia to acquire that job and work there full time and actually make something out of himself. While in West Virginia working his job, he ended up in another relationship that again did not last too long. Then he eventually left once his family, not his family, once his girlfriend's family started to accuse him of abuse to their their daughter, their child or whatever. So he was just having some really bad luck with his life and i think he just i don't know i don't know what to say about this it's like his life is to shit like it's just really bad like i don't know he's just he just has a a really bad freaking life in 1975 also he traveled to michigan in order to team up with a petty thief who was also his friend named otis I guess he had nothing to lose and he didn't really like the job that his family member had gotten him but you know once a criminal sometimes always a criminal not for everybody but definitely for him that definitely was a slogan for him otis and lucas shared a very unhealthy interest in rape and death so two and two put together is just not a healthy combination at all Anybody who even has an interest in the first place is not a healthy person. But anyway, in October 1970, Lucas Otis and his niece, Otis's niece, Becky Powell, traveled the country. Becky Powell was said to be intellectually not responsible, maybe a lot low IQ, just was not all there in the head to make decisions for herself. And she was also a minor because before she decided to go on these trips, these travels around the country with Otis, she was under age. She was in a juvenile detention center because her mother and her grandmother had died recently. So she had nowhere else to go. Let's say in 1970, 
1970. I'm not in 1979. I'm so, I'm sorry, guys. Then Lucas was able to convince her to run away with just him. And again, she just wasn't all there in the head to know what is a good choice and what wasn't a good choice. She just was intellectually low. They lived on the road for a while until they tra traveled to California where an employer's wife was able to get them a job taking care of their elderly mother. Her name was Kate Rich. She was 82 years old. Not too long after hiring them, the family turned against um, Becky Powell and Lucas saying that they weren't doing the jobs that they had said that they were going to do of taking care of the elderly mother, grandmother, and that they had forged a few checks on under Rich's name, Kate Rich's name. So they were upset about it and they were letting them go. They ended up hitchhiking and were picked up by a minister of a Stoneberg, Texas religious commune called the House of Prayer, thinking that Lucas and the 15 year old, yes, Becky was 15, was a married couple. He helped them out, helped them find some jobs, gave them a place to stay, just did what he could. So Lucas had a stable job for a while as a roofer and they had a small apartment together thanks to the minister. It was said that Powell started to become very argumentative with Lucas. They would get into fights very often. Things were just not looking pretty pretty at all for them so Lucas had said that Powell had gotten homesick and wanted to go back to Florida and that she took a truck back she took a truck and drove back to Florida in June 1983 Lucas was arrested for an unlawful firearm that he possessed while in Texas while under detainment he confessed to the murders of Becky Powell and also Kate rich in addition to actually just confessing he also um decided to show them evidence of the crime and i honestly while reading about this case i don't understand why he outwardly just came out about it um but he did and maybe his conscience was just weighing on him who knows he was able to leave them to what he said was the bodies but when the coroners were looking at the remains it came back inconclusive it was if it was really the people that he said that it was but at the end of the day in my opinion if he's leading you to somewhere where he knows there's body remains shouldn't he still be charged with a crime like he knew where somebody put the bodies of somebody who had just died like isn't that strange but i don't know anything so don't quote me on that one lucas later de denied involvement but the consensus really showed that he did murder kate and becky powell because again they were just never seen again so make it make sense make it make sense in november 1983 lucas was transferred to wilmington texas county jail he said that he was roughly treated by other in inmates and that he attempted to commit suicide oh my god this is all done lucas claimed that police had stripped him naked that they tortured his genitalia that he just was not treated with basic human rights. Task force eventually cleared 213 cases based off of the confessions of Lucas. Lucas actually got prefer preferential treatment due to his confessions, which is just odd to me. Like, I'm so shooketh. He was rarely handcuffed. He was allowed to reign the entire police station, not an issue. And he even know, knew a few codes to doors, which that just mind boggled me even more because there's no way he should have known that stuff regardless. Like that's just not, that's not okay. That's just bad policing, honestly, in my opinion. Later, when they were trying to really buckle down on his involvement and really see if he was involved in these crimes it was really undetermined because lucas were, was allowed to roam around look at documents and it was really like could he just look at a document and just fake a confession based off of what he read just to like add a few other words just to make it seem like it matches up with what happened like honestly that's the really crazy part that we'll never really know. But it was determined that most of his confessions were lies and that 
the investigators just wanted to get a lot of the cases off of the books and that's why they allowed him to confess and almost like read him basically hand given him details in order to confess two crimes that he did not commit. Lucas remained convicted of 11 homicides. He had been sentenced to death for one of them. His death sentence was eventually given to just life in, sen life in prison as he was, as evidence came about that he was actually given the case file to read in order to confess about it. Even though I feel like that whole thing should be pushed out, shouldn't even be another life in, sen life in prison, just for the fact that he didn't commit that, I think that should be let go. Not the fact, I don't think he should be let free because of course he did commit some murder. So of course he should be in jail, but just not on the basis of that crime. But life in prison for that one as well. Maybe, I don't know. You let me know what you guys thought about that one, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So on March 12th, 2001 at 11 p.m., Lucas died. He was found dead in his cell and it was determined it was from heart failure. He died at the age 64, which, I mean, do we really lose anybody important? I don't think so, but that's just my opinion. So he was buried at the Joe Bird Cemetery in Texas. And as of 2012, his grave is unmarked due to vandalism and theft of graves, etc., etc. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mystery Monday. This is the look. It's nothing fantastic, something simple. Cause I took some photos. Here are the photos if you guys want to see it. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. The link is down below. And if you like this murder mystery Monday, I post every Monday. Like, comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.